Well, hello, and welcome back to That Girl's Quilting Threads and Things. And if this is your first time joining, welcome aboard. This channel, I've been building blocks of different kinds from traditional patterns that I've discovered in books, and I put them together, hopefully giving you tips and tricks on how to put these blocks together. Now, total disclaimer, I'm not a professional quilter, this is a hobby of mine that I have learned from watching many, many YouTube channels, but more importantly, from the coaching and mentorship and inspiration from people like my mother-in-law and from my local quilt shops. I love it. It's an addictive hobby. Speaking of love, well, that's today's quilt block. It's a love and a mist pattern. And just be warned, that it is not an easy pattern, or at least it wasn't for me. I found challenges along the way. Maybe you might see some of those challenges. I've done some thread ripping, but let's go ahead and take this quilt block one stitch at a time. So today's block is going to consist of one set of flying geese, four, so we'll make flying geese four at a time. And then the rest of it is going to be squares and half square triangles. So we'll have light and dark fabrics and we'll be making two at a time half square triangles for one light and one dark, for a different light and a different dark. We'll be making four at a time half square triangles for a light and a dark We'll be making four at a time half square triangles for two lights. Then we'll be making two at a time half square triangles for another dark and lights. I have eight squares, four dark and four light that are just going to sit inside of our square. Starting with our flying geese, we're going to take our peak fabric and lay it right sides up. Then we're going to take our sky fabric and place those pieces face up. And we're going to draw a line diagonal corner to corner. Now you can draw two lines if that is easier for you. There is no right way and there is no wrong way. You can use Taylor's chalk. You can use a pencil. I'm using a frictionless pen and these ink marks will disappear once I put a heated iron on them. So now that we have our lines drawn, I'm going to take two of our sky fabric and I'm going to place them right sides together with the diagonal line in the corner of the peak fabric. I'm going to go ahead and pin that and then I'm going to take a second one. I'm going to do the same. Okay, and I know that they're placed nicely because the line that I drew is a continuous look. It looks like a continuous line. Turn it around. I'm going to pin the second side. Then I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and with the top square I'm going to feed this through the sewing machine and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew on the left and right side of this drawn line one quarter inch away. We'll come back and cut down the middle and that's the first half of our flying geese four at a time method. Now we're ready to go ahead and make our first cut on our flying geese unit. So just line your ruler up diagonal corner to corner. It sh the edge of it should Align right with the line that you drew. Alright, so now we have two pieces. I'm going to take this to the pressing station and press these pieces open. First, a gentle finger press. Alright, now we have these funny cat looking silhouette pieces. Alright, so the next step to making our flying geese unit is to take our remaining two squares and line them up and again I will pin and again I'm going to sew a quarter inch stitch line on the left and right side of my drawn line. So I'll be right back. Okay so there you have 
the parts sewn and they're ready to cut in half. Let's go ahead and place our ruler. All right, now we're gonna take these to the pressing station and open up our flying geese unit. Now for the flying geese, I'm just gonna pair, I'm just gonna trim off the dog ears. I'm not gonna worry about squaring them up quite yet. And the reason is, is because I'm going to match them up with two half square triangles to make one four and a half inch square block, okay? And then I will square up everything so that it lines better. And the reason why is because I don't want to take away any potential valuable real estate that is intended to be part of, to give me seam allowance. If I cut away from it ahead of time or prematurely, I may cut away that real estate that I need for the seam allowance when I go to match, when I go to pair this up with the half square triangles. These square units here don't need to be cut or pieced with anything. They are part of the thin, um, they are part of the actual block when we get ready to piece it all together. So we're gonna set those off to the side. Our four at a time half square triangles. So we have one combination that requires two different lights. So we're gonna take those two and we're gonna place them right sides together and we're gonna pin. So this block here is a six by six grid, which means that in order for the block to finish at 12 and a half inches, each block needs to be two and a half inches unfinished. They will finish at two inches. So in order to get four at a time, two and a half inch half square triangles, we're going to go ahead and sew a quarter inch seam allowance around the edge. And then we're going to cut on each diagonal. That will give us four for this fabric combination. We have two additional combinations that we're going to do the four at a time method with. But for this fabric combination, we want a total of eight. Following the same steps, lining up the fabric together. So now I'm gonna take these to the sewing machine, sew my quarter inch seam allowance around the edge, bring them back, and we'll slice them up. So we've sewn our quarter inch seam allowance all the way around all three of these paired units. Now all you need to do is cut diagonal on corner to corner on all three of them. And this will give you 12 half square triangles. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take these to the pressing station, give them a quick press, and come back and square them up. Now we have 12 of our half square triangle units. To square these up, what you want to do is you wanna have a ruler that has a 45 degree line. All right, this 45 degree line is going to run right along the middle seam of your half square triangles, okay? And what you're gonna do is you want these blocks cut to one, two and a half inch square. Lining the center line, 45 degree, corner to corner, all right? You should have a little bit of wiggle room on the outside. So your first cut will give you your true corner. Flip it 180 degrees. This corner will now rest on the two and a half inch where the two and a half inch vertical and the two and a half inch horizontal meet. And then you make your final cut. That squares that up. So I have 10 more blocks to do and I'll meet you right back here. All right, we're done with all 12 of our blocks. They're all squared down to two and a half inches. And now we're ready to go ahead and put together our two at a time half square triangle pairs. With our two at a time, to get the size of square that we need, 
we want to add 7 eighths of an inch to our finished size. So we want our finished size to be 2 inches finished. Uncut is 2 and a half, but finished size is 2 inches. So our squares are cut at 2 and 7 eighths. All right. We'll take our opposing colors, place them right sides together, pin, and these are small enough I feel comfortable to just put one pin in. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and draw a line down the center of each unit. And then I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance on either side of that line. So a quarter inch on the left side and a quarter inch on the right side. Then I will cut it in half, roll it open, and that will give me my two half square triangle units per pair. And you should have four pairs of fabrics, making a total of eight more half square triangles. All right, let's go ahead and get these to the sewing machine. Okay, we've got all four of these done. Now we're ready to go ahead and cut them. Right down the center. You roll these open and there you have your half square triangle made two at a time. I'm not going to go through the squaring up process. I showed that earlier, but I am going to take these to the station. I'm going to press them open. I'll square them up and we'll come back, piece all of these units together. All right, we squared up all of our half square triangle units and now we're ready to go ahead and lay out each unit for our love in a mist variation quilt block. So let's go ahead and piece these things together. So we have these. Let's take a quick gander, make sure that we have everything. When I did the six inch block for this, I found it much easier. I put my flying geese units together this way, and then I did four patches. I just put together all the little four patches, and then that turned into three four patch units which turned into putting together the same process as a nine patch unit. So let's go ahead and work the block that way. So I'm going to take this now to the sewing machine and I'm going to start by piecing together these half square triangles together and then I'm going to piece the flying geese with them. All right, we're ready to go ahead and do the units with our flying geese. So I'm going to go ahead and sew all of these together first. Just going to chain stitch them. And I repressed these so that they would be, the seams would be going in opposite directions so that they would nest better with the other side. And when we talk about nesting, so these seams are going this way, these seams are going this way. When we put them together, when we put them together, the seams nest into one another in a tongue and groove fashion. So if you see there, there's a bulk there and there's a slight bump there. And then if I pinch them together, they feel flat 
and they won't slide. And when you do that, it makes it so that one, it reduces the bulk inside your unit and it also helps to align your points much better. And that's what happens when we nest our seams. We get these nice, precise, sharp points. All right, so now these are ready to be put together with our flying geese unit. All right, let's go ahead and get these flying geese prepped up. And then we can come back and put together all of the units inside the block. We're going to start with our four patch unit the center. So right sides together and we're going to chain piece this. Seams going one direction, seam going the opposite direction. For the center block, what I did was I pressed that center seam open to help it lay that much flatter. So now the center block unit is done. We have our four corner pieces. All right, now we have a regular nine patch to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the far left, I'm gonna go ahead and take the far left columns, sew them right sides together, a quarter inch seam allowance on each row. Then I'm gonna come back and attach the final block to each row and compare the rows. So let's go ahead. So we're going to start with a far block, taking the next two, the bottom two, making sure everything is still in its proper place and in its proper position. Sometimes when you catch a little extra bulk underneath your needle, you just got to nudge, nudge it a little bit more, take your time. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to go ahead and press my seams towards the outside on the top row, towards the outside on the bottom row, and towards the center in the middle row. Now we're ready to put them all together. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and pin these seams. Here we go. Let's see how did we do. Okay. Doesn't look like we lost any points. So I think we're doing good so far. One more row to go. All right, let's get this block pressed and check it out. <laughs> All right, so there you have it. Our love in a mist variation block. And it looks like I'm actually gonna have to take this back to the sewing machine and fix my little character imperfections, which is okay. It's a good exercise in paying attention to detail, as I've said many times before. All right, so we're back at finishing up our block. I had to do some uh, seam ripping. So let's go ahead and finish putting these blocks together. We have one row put together. We have one row that needs to be completely re-put together. And then we have another row that just has one part to go in it. So we have here one, two, three, four, basically we have five rows or five layers of fabric. This makes for quite a thick hurdle for the needle to traverse. And then we have the same thing here. So we have a piece here, we have this piece here, and this piece here, and this piece here. Only adding to the amount of bulk that that 
that the um, needle will need to traverse. So I'm actually going to take the time to take this piece right here and I'm going to make sure that whatever direction this is going that these two are going in an opposing direction. So I'm going to actually press this one right here in the opposite direction so that it will nest and minimize the amount of bulk. This one here is already in the opposite direction. Now that we've got them pressed in opposite directions, now we can go ahead and nest those seams up just nicely. Now those are put together. Let's go ahead and attach this third piece. Now we can go ahead and finish off this row. I'm going to go ahead and repress these so that the seams for this one is going to go to the outside. And then I'm going to make sure that this seam here is going towards the inside. And again, that goes to support good nesting seams, making the block go together much easier with as minimal amount of bulk as possible. It makes it easy on the needle and makes it lay nice and flat when, when it's um, all put together in the quilt. Let's go ahead and get these first two rows put together. And again, it's not a raise. So now we have our first two rows put together. And it doesn't look like we've lost any of our points. Okay. And it looks like they're all pretty well lined up. As So let's go ahead and finish with our third row. Make sure it's in the right position. Flip it right sides together. Pin where you feel it matters. And with so many different intersections in this block, I think it's good to pin at as many junction points that you find. All right. There we have it. Now we're ready to press it and call it an episode. And there's our 12 inch block, Love in a Mist. And that's 36 units that we basically put together. When you take your time and pay attention to where you stitch, you get these really nice points. Now, not every point on this block is perfectly lined up. Let's look at this one here for a moment. Do you see how this half square triangle is kind of cut off at the point there? And, but on the flying geese, that point is nicely matched up. Can you notice that if you were walking by? Is it so obvious? I think not. I think the art is in the craft work, the design and the beauty of the imagination of the person creating the project. And here's our six inch sister that goes right along with it. So I want to thank you for joining me on today's journey, Love in a Mist quilt block. I hope that you were able to follow along even with all the bumps and bruises along the way. I hope that I was able to provide you with maybe some tips or tricks that you can take along in your quilting journeys in the future. And as always, May all your quilting journeys be joyful, one stitch at a time.